dawn, the signs read, still he went on. He stayed with Muslims. Wasn't he a Hindu? I am Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, Jew, Parsi, he said as he had always said. What was the cause of the riots? The idiocy of both communities, he told them. Why didn't he go to the leaders? Why had he come to them? Neighborhood peace will reach to the leaders, he said. At his meetings for prayer, the Bible, the Koran, the Talmud, the Gita were all read. The riots quiet. If you ever want to become mad again, you must destroy me first, he warned. Meanwhile, Nehru and Jenna flew to England for a special conference with Prime Minister Attlee. Jenna was now holding out for partition and a Muslim state. Nehru returned. Jinnah had said, as long as I live, I will never accept a united India. Constituent Assembly met, but without Muslim League representation. Radha Krishna, the philosopher, Nehru, the leaders, all signed and ratified two years later a constitution along Swiss and American lines, which began, we the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign democratic republic. Lady Mountbatten and Lord Mountbatten, the last viceroy, arrived to arrange a peaceful transfer of power into Indian hands. The guard lined up before the palace. The crowds were wild with joy. India was free. Independence Day had come. The Viceroy and Lady Mountbatten, representatives of what could have been an enemy country, made bitter by shedding of blood, rode smiling through the streets and the people cheered, for England and India were friends. And these were the people whom Gandhi had led into the first victory by a nation of non-violence. These were the people who had risen higher in the use of non-violence as a force than any in the world. These were the people who had followed Gandhi in believing that the human spirit is more powerful than tanks and aircraft. They were all there. The hundreds of thousands who had gone to jail, the volunteers, the women freed, the women of whom Gandhi had always said, the women are with me. The thousands had been with Gandhi, who had watched his fasts, his actions, people in the villages, the teachers, all were there. On the platform sat Nehru, whom Gandhi had called son, who called Gandhi father. And so Independence Day came to India, and the flag of freedom flew. And there was jubilation and rejoicing and prayer. And everywhere the lights were lit, in the towers, the streets, the buildings, on the flag with the spinning wheel of freedom. The Jai Hind, the lights which spelled out victory to India. And in the center of the spinning wheel, Gandhi. not been at the ceremony. Pakistan had been declared a separate state. Gandhi spent the day fasting and praying for harmony among the people of India. He sent no message. His thoughts were turned inward. At the prayer meeting they sang the Ram Nam, while Gandhi wondered, had he led his people astray? <laughs> But he was to see proof that he had not. For on the day the British left India, Gandhi saw a country that had come as a conqueror leave as a friend. Guns had not been raised against the British. The army against them had been the non-violent army of the Dandi Salt March. And that 
which was good and merciful in an Indian had met with what was good and merciful in an empire. And they parted at peace. And on the earth they shared, there were few seeds of bitterness to grow bitter fruit. took his first sip of juice after the fast, the cries rang in the streets, down with communal strife, Hindus and Muslims are brothers, save the Mahatma. But the Mahatma was not destined to be saved. He had been staying at Birla House. Each day he held his meetings for prayer. A bomb had been thrown some ten days before at Gandhi, but he had refused protection. His only wish now was to die without anger and with the name of God on his lips. And so on January the 30th, 1948, at five minutes past five, Gandhi went from Birla House to his prayer meeting. And a man who feared Gandhi's way stepped forward, bowed to Gandhi, raised a gun, and fired. Gandhi fell. Hey Rama, he whispered the name of God. And so Mahatma Gandhi finished with this life. They dressed him in the loincloth, draped the flag of free India over him. The women wept. Two hundred men of India pulled the carrier with his body on it. The procession moved out and onto the road to Raja. It took five hours for the procession to go five and a half miles. Prayers arose. All India wept. At Rajgat, the body burned for 14 hours. The Gita was read. Truth and love, the Gita had said to Gandhi those 60 years ago. The ashes were gathered, put in urns sent to six continents and to all parts of India. Fourteen days later, by ancient ritual, there were final ceremonies in all India. Chief was at Allahabad, the sacred place where the three sacred rivers met. The urn with the ashes moved slowly, so slowly. The heart of India seemed hardly to move. Brought it 
to the end.